Another beautiful day here in Pennsylvania, and the last time we were at a greenhouse, it was Ott's Plant Farm and Exotic Plants. Awesome building, amazing place, but sometimes it's even better to have a place a little closer to home. We're at Dan Shan's Greenhouse here in Allentown, and this whole video is about planting your terrarium. Let's go see what we can find out. So we know any good greenhouse has a huge selection of plants. This place is absolutely no different. And to be honest with you, I am not the plant expert. So we managed to pull Tim out of a meeting today just so he could tell a lot more about plants with somebody who knows a whole lot about plants too, our good friend Hillary. So I'm gonna pass my mic off to him and they're gonna tell you all about how to plant your tropical terrarium. Hey guys, let's pick some plants for our terrariums. Not the easiest task, especially if you don't necessarily know what makes a good plant, what makes a bad plant, but we're here to walk you through that process, which really isn't that hard. Quite truthfully, you look for plants that look good to you, right? That's the fun part. Yeah, but you do have to keep a couple things in mind. You need plants that actually create a quality living space inside your terrarium. So that means if we look over here, we've got some Dracaenas, leafy, basically like a grass. That's not a bad plant for a terrestrial animal. Terrestrial animal will work around it. The root structure or the stems are pretty narrow. So even all the foliage it creates up above, it won't actually take up much of the ground area. So your terrestrial animal will be able to move around. However, if you were gonna put that in a cage with say a chameleon that wants sticks and stems uh, and you know trunks of trees to climb on, that's not very good. A chameleon is not gonna be able to grab onto that. And if it does, it's gonna fall over. So it could be put in a corner, maybe one in each back corner for foliage, but it's not necessarily good for the chameleon to actually climb on. That doesn't make it a bad plant. Up above, we've got an asparagus, really common, high density plant, very good for baby chameleons. Decent for geckos, but not necessarily ideal, and I can explain why in a bit when I show you kind of an ideal gecko plant. But the good thing about asparagus ferns is that they grow really well. The bad thing is that some of them will actually get little spines on them. So be cautious of that. I've never had an animal have a problem with spines. On the other side, we've got a fiddle leaf fig, which is a type of ficus. And what you're gonna see here Look at this robust uh, stem and uh, trunk of it. And that allows, if you have a larger enclosure for a chameleon, because trust me, a fiddle leaf is not gonna fit inside a small terrarium. But if you have a larger enclosure, that's a great uh, terrarium plant for a chameleon or a monitor. Hillary, you wanna go over some of these guys over here? Oh, sure. Majesty Palms here. See, I have a personal issue with majesty palms. I have, I have found them to be very prone to pests. Uh, majesty palms tend to have mealybugs, yes. uh, which are very difficult to treat and they can spread quickly throughout your plant collection. So an important thing to note when you are buying a plant, look on the underside of it, investigate your plant, make sure that it doesn't have any pests or parasites or issues like that or fungus because it can become a really big problem throughout your collection. I, I would add to that, I've used the palm in many terrariums, and while it works well in the beginning, inevitably, they always succumb to mealybugs, and they stop growing very well. They turn yellow because the mealybugs suck the life right out of the plant. But right next to this palm, I think we have what Hillary and I would consider one of the uh, one of the industry's best plant for a terrarium, which is a good old fashioned ficus benjamina or regular old ficus. This plant, this is a big one, okay? So you're not necessarily going to be using a plant of this size and size of your terrarium, but you can get ficus benjaminas that are like this tall and this tall. And the beauty of it when you get a small one like that is rather than training it to grow a long trunk and just have bushes on top, you can actually grow it fully out into a bush right at the substrate level. That gives chameleon space to climb, geckos, uh, branches and leaves to sit on, um, any you know basic tropical lizard like an anole can use it as well. I would say this is one of uh, any professional reptile keeper's favorite plants. 
The only caveat is that they're very sensitive to appropriate water uh, moisture content in the substrate. And if they do go dry, they'll just start dropping their leaves and it will take them a very long time to actually grow their leaves back. So you don't want to do that. You want to make sure that you keep the moisture content in your substrate the same at all times and adequate. I don't actually know what this one is, but I'm going to say that it would be a pretty decent plant. Um, oh, no, hold on. Medium or diffuse light can be grown outside in shade April to October. So if this is a plant that needs to be outside, I'm going to say don't get it, right? You don't want a plant that you actually have to put outside during certain parts of the year because within our terrariums, we're not doing that. This plant, however, I know that, uh, that we've used before. So, okay, it's the same one. Um, we, we've put these inside of our terrariums. They're low ground cover style plants. They create a nice lush foliage at the bottom and you can always trim them to keep them low. Or you could put them in the back corner of your terrarium, allow them to grow in and create shade for your animal and then create a climbing area using, um, using sticks uh, over, here we have what looks to be a peperomia. So that is, so they don't actually give it a name. It's got an odd shaped leaf for a peperomia, but it does have the structure of a peperomia. Do you have any idea, Hillary? These are looking like they might be lipstick plants to okay. me. Okay, which... yep. So why don't you tell us a little bit about these? Nice dangling vining plants. Uh, they grow well in all of our types of terrariums. They yep. like it humid, they like indirect light, uh, they provide a nice grasping area for chameleons, uh, and they're nice to dangle from the top of the enclosure so you can get this cascading effect too. That's a really good point. <laughs> so if you do hang a plant in your terrarium, which you can easily do with a leaf terrarium, you get the benefit of the vineage coming down to the bottom, and that provides tremendous uh, climbing structure for any kind of animal. Over here we have a real staple, the one and only pothos. My personal favorites. <laughs> yes, Hillary loves her pothos. We do tend to disagree about this. I know you're team philodendron yes. as far as the climbing viners go, but I am <laughs> solidly team pothos. I love them. They grow fast. They're easy. They're very tolerant of all kinds of light conditions. Yep and they let you know when they need to be watered. They're very communicative plants. <laughs> yep, and they, they don't just turn around and die. Like, you know, for example, the ficus, it kind of does. If you mess it up, it will just turn around and die on you. Pothos, absolutely not. You might lose, a, if a leaf turns yellow, that's an indicator that needs water or nutrients. Um, as Hillary said, they grow really quickly, which is an advantage, but I'm going to come in here and say that philodendron is my personal favorite, <laughs> and it's only for the aesthetic value. So I just personally believe that philodendron is a little bit more attractive. So when we find one, we'll show you. And one more note about pothos that's worth mentioning. Uh, you can propagate these very easily. So if you look on the plant right here, those little parts there, those are called nodes. And if you snip the plant like that, stick it in water for a few weeks and you can create your own plants again. You, you are cloning your plant yep. essentially. These nodes turn into roots mm -hmm. and that's it. Once it, you can just put it in water and once it actually roots, you can plant in any terrarium and pothos as well can be grown completely uh, hydroponically. Yep. There's no need to actually put it in soil whatsoever. So if you have an aquatic terrarium, like, uh, like for example mine with turtle, um, you can use a pothos and just create a support structure for the leaves and the roots will grow into the terrarium. Oh, got a car driving by. <laughs> Let's go over here. All right, this one always escapes me. They're, they're called- uh, Those are prayer plants. <laughs> prayer plants, thank you. So we've used these a lot in our terraria and they do work well. They are without a doubt a foliage or space, um, you know, a space taking type of plant. They're not necessarily for your animal to interact with, whereas a ficus or even a pothos would be great because they give plenty of climbing surfaces for your animals. This is more of just a looker. I would consider it a background plant or in a very large terrarium where you have a lot of pathways for your animal to move around. It's good for that too. Uh, same is too, true of these Calatheas over here. I, I think, honestly, this one may be a Calathea, just a different type. Ah, 
The Chefalera. Something we both can agree on. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> Everyone's favorite bush. So if you live in Florida, these are actually used as um, outdoor foliage plants. And uh, they're one of uh, terrarium's ideal plants. They are similar to a ficus in that they generate like a big trunk and strong branches. But the Chefalera is so easy. It is, it really easy. is. They're very agreeable plants. Yep, and they grow fast. They look pretty. They fill up a tremendous amount of space. And don't think that they only come in this size here. Uh, you can get them in significantly smaller bushes. All right, let's see what else we can find. Okay, so we talked about a handful of plants that are good for our terrarium. Let's talk about some that aren't necessarily bad, but they're not ideal. So all these citrus trees, uh, lime, lemon, um, they're not a bad plant. It's not that there's anything wrong with them, but they require a wintering period, which you can't do inside of your terrarium. They need to be planted in a greenhouse with the windows open during the winter so they can cool down. It's really just not worth it for a terrarium. The same is true over here of a plant like fall pansies. You know, these are plants that only really bloom this time of year. So it's not the best to put them inside of your terrarium because if you do that, you're just gonna result in you know, a, a dead plant that you have to pull out. So we wanna find tropical houseplants, not, you know, not these ornamentals or these um, annuals. Those are a no-no. Love them, they're very popular, but today we need to keep in mind that we are doing a tropical enclosure and succulents are more desert plants and they have very different needs than the other plants that we have been talking about earlier. Succulents are desert plants, and it's worth noting that they do have spikes on them too, which you need to be careful of with your animals because if your animals are climbing over succulents like this that are spiky, they risk damaging themselves. Hey, Hillary, I found some... Oh, that's not a philodendron that's either. That's not a philodendron. <laughs> well, I thought I had one, but I don't. But what we do have here Search are some continues. different ficus varieties. So this is yet another ficus, and you can see it's got a very large leaf structure. Nice plant. I don't know its specific care, but if it is from the ficus family, it's gonna do pretty well. Uh, over here, we have some Hoya plants. Again, you don't have to be a plant expert to choose a plant. I don't know anything about this plant, but what I'm seeing are branches and vines that actually wrap around themselves and spread out. That means to me that it's gonna be great in a terrarium at the bottom level, because it's gonna spread all over the bottom of your terrarium, which is great combined with a leaf litter layer and a good bioactive substrate choice. This plant looks like it would be fantastic. Sansevieria, pretty good plant for a desert environment. Nothing to really say about it. They look good, they don't take up much space, they grow vertically, they've got pretty leaves. A bearded dragon in a bioactive substrate is gonna enjoy this. Make sure you have a big enough enclosure for it, of course. Now, would I put it with some tropical geckos? No, absolutely not. Not the right environment. Any succulent or desert type of plant is not gonna do great with, uh, in a tropical environment. Now, these, is this, uh, this is not our wandering dude here, but it is similar and I'm sure we will find one. Okay, I wasn't sure if this was the little, was it baby's breath or something like that that has a flower? If you do know, leave a note in the comments because we're clueless <laughs> yeah, we, here we on don't this know one. This one. <laughs> but I will say it looks like a beautiful plant to plant at the bottom of your enclosure or to hang from the top for a lush foliage. It, uh, it's pretty darn nice. Ah. Good one. Let's talk about peace lilies. Yes. <laughs> peace lilies, uh, what is the action? Spathiphyllum. Thank you, I was blanking there for a second. These are easy plants. They are good plants, but we don't like them. Nope. And there's a couple of reasons why we don't like them. First and foremost, they flower regularly, which you're like, well, Tim, why is that such a big deal? It'd be beautiful. They leave tons of pollen, so they actually make a mess inside your terrarium. Secondly, look how dense this structure is, you know? Even when I release it, there's almost no room for an animal to interact 
inside of this plant. So what it means is you're basically filling your space with a useless plant that can't really be enjoyed. Yep. And then I know you have some opinions on their actual growth characteristics. Yeah, and like it's just the, the functionality of it is very low. The leaves aren't firm enough for an animal to climb on top of. The, the stems are too thick for anybody to get through. It's just kind of a waste of space. And my particular issues with the pollen too, like it is known to be toxic for certain animals and you don't want to risk even like a feeder coming in contact with this pollen and then your animal ingesting it. And I mean, we might as well use this as an opportunity to talk about plant toxicity in general. So the main thing with plant toxicity is that the toxicity is actually contained within the leaves. And, and to some extent, it could be in the pollen. We don't really know. With the pollen, that toxicity could be getting into the air. Now your animals are breathing it. That's a lot of exposure. However, when it comes to plant toxicity with leaves, I'm not that worried about it, personally. Hillary and I probably have 40 years of combined experience keeping reptiles and amphibians in a, a pet fashion as well as in a breeding fashion. I've never run into any issues with plant toxicity. The animal, even a veiled chameleon, if it does eat a leaf, it takes a bite or two. These leaves don't taste good. They're not food. You know, even the, the crickets, the insects, they don't eat the leaves. I just don't personally believe that you're going to be able to eat enough of this plant to actually be exposed. If you are cautious of plant toxicity, I respect that. It's just not something that we've personally gone through. Um, especially in regards to chameleons too, which is primarily what we're dealing with. Yep. Um, I will say like I have an iguana too, and iguanas are herbivores, and I am more cautious with her because she is, if I put plants in there, she's going to be eating them. Yep. So I try to keep them on the absolutely edible spectrum just to be on the safe side because she's an herbivore and yeah. as chameleons, they, they are not. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and on, the other, on the other side of the spectrum, you've got a gecko. Geckos don't eat leaves, nope. right? Even a day gecko, yeah, it licks fruit. It doesn't eat a leaf. So you pretty much have nothing to worry about with those animals. Agreed. Keep moving here. This is, uh, I forget the name of this one. Do you recall? That is a ZZ plant. Thank you, <laughs> yep. So these are really good growers. They tend to be survivors. They work well. They grow more or less vertically just with the leaf structure coming off of the main, um, the main stem, but uh, they don't necessarily fill out in terms of foliage. Not a bad plant, nothing wrong with it. I would say, you know, it should be on your list of plants to consider if, it, if you like it. Remember with all these plants we're talking about, it's how you feel about it. You really can't go wrong. If we come over here, don't put a mum inside of your terrarium. <laughs> Please don't. Okay. <laughs> Please I don't know do if that. the whole country has mums, <laughs> but in the Northeast with our, our nice cold falls, mums are a very common uh, plant to sell at plant stores like this because we put them outside of our home. They do really well, beautiful flowers, nice smell. It's not appropriate for a terrarium for the reasons that I said earlier. Ferns, however, ferns can be appropriate for a terrarium. But I would add kind of the same caveat that I did with the um, spathiphyllum, which is, what are you really getting out of this plant? You're not getting climbing area, you're just getting density. Probably not worth it. Okay, we found it, finally, the much spoken about philodendron. So this is my personal preference as an alternative to pothos. I just think it's beautiful. It's, you know, it just has a little bit more, to me, a little bit more of interesting features. They're slightly more delicate. They grow significantly slower than a pythos, but they're great. Over here, we have what I assume to be an English ivy. And you can also find a, a creeping ficus that uh, is similar. These are excellent ground covers, excellent foliage plants. One we use all the time. And then the uh, arrowhead plant which I believe is referred, commonly referred to as an arrowhead plant. Also another really nice plant. So the important thing that we really want you guys to understand is that it's hard to go wrong with plants. We've got a lot of beautiful plants here. I don't necessarily know exactly what their care requirements are, but you can research them. And these are all tropical house plants. Any of them in theory could be good inside your terrarium. Don't be afraid. 
Just remember that when you select your plants, you want to do so for their function and their aesthetic. Not necessarily one or the other though. Try and do both. With that said, thanks for watching us. Take care and hope to see you again on a new Leap video.